What's up, man? How are you? I'm good, thank you. You know, you've, you've been doing this for a little while now, but when it's a co-main event, do you get like a little sort of like, ah, this is cool, I'm near the top of the card, that's fun? Nah, not really. I uh, I don't think it really changes uh, anything except actual card placement. Um, and funny enough is that I, I had heard on, was it yesterday? Yeah, I think yesterday, somebody had asked me at the gym when I was t- turning up to train, and they're like, hey, so are you the Komi now? I was like, no, I don't think so. Why? And they're like, oh, because uh, what happened to the song uh, song in a uh, Ricky fight? And I was like, well, what happened? And then they told me, and I was like, oh, I don't know. And you know what's funny is nobody on the UFC side has confirmed to me, like, hey, you're the Komi now. But then I did a, an interview last night, and they, they brought it up. They're like, oh, so you're the Komi now, yada, yada, you know? And I was like, I guess I am. It's funny, right, because I think maybe the media put almost more emphasis on that. I mean, it's the main event's a bit different, right? Yeah, no, main event, definitely different. You know, you're headlining the card. You get a little extra money for that main event uh, bonus, I guess. So, yeah. The rest of it, like, like, get it done early and then get out. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, so for me, it's just I'm fighting, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes later now. Uh, It doesn't really change for me. It's not like they're going to go put our face on the poster now or anything like that, so... Nothing changes. What do you think of the fight itself? What do you think of Bruno, his skills, and sort of his journey through the UFC and how you match up with him? Um, I've not seen a lot of his journey. I've watched the, the last few of his fights, and what I know most of him, and I think what notably stands out for everybody is he's one of, or he's the only guy in the UFC, you know, to go the distance with Pereira. Um, and I watched, that was one of the first fights I watched. Uh, the first time I watched it actually was with Sean when he uh, we were cutting weight last summer. Um, for our, he fought Pereira and I fought Dreykus and we were watching that fight. Um, so that was actually the first time that I really seen Bruno. And obviously I went back and watched his fights now. But uh, yeah, very very tough guy, talented guy. Um, no no slouch. Um, and, and that just goes to show, you know, like he took some of like Pereira was trying to take his head off, yeah. and he just took those shots. So, you know, like, I know that's a tough guy right there. It's kind of funny that Pereira is, like, this guy who's just known to be so dangerous. It's like, you last the distance, you're like, man, you're tough. But, I mean, he surely is. So, with that in mind, when you hit him with a great shot, do you have to say to yourself, like, hey, I, he might still be there. Don't freak out if he is. Just keep working, keep oh, working. Uh, I, I know that dude is tough. Um, it's going to take a lot to get him out of there. And I think I can get him out of there, but... I'm not going to, like like you said, I'm not, it's, it won't be a surprise to me if I land something clean and flush and dude is just still standing there. I'll be like, all right. Yeah. So with that in mind, do you, is it almost like, I don't know if you're a big visualization guy, but do you like even think of the fight or do you think like, hey, I can't even imagine knocking him out because if I don't and then he's still there, then that would like bug me or do you just not think about no, it? Not at all. I, I, I am a big visualization guy. Um, I'll run it through um, and more so like, I, I feel like sometimes people get a little too focused and keyed in on one specific thing. Um, I'll go through the fight, excuse me, and kind of play it out in my head a little bit, but never like specifically like, okay, in round one at 235, I'm going to hit him with this and he's going to sway to the left and then I'm going to hit him with that and that's when he's going to fall. And I'm, you know, like yeah. never that specific. More so just I know what I need to do, I know what he brings, and I know what I need to do to beat him. And at the end of it, I, I just make sure, you know, I, I'm standing there with my hands raised. Nice, man. Well, I mean, with that said, do you have a prediction on how it's going to go? Or you just think we'll get in there, but I'm getting the W. Yeah, 100% I'm getting the W. I don't have a prediction for you, but I know I'm going to beat this guy. Hey, Brad. What's up, man? How disappointed were you that uh, you didn't get to fight in January going into enemy territory to fight RoboCop? Um, I, I was... Uh, uh, it's funny. I just talked about this with the um, the broadcast team. They were asking me a similar question. Um, yeah, it, it was the whole thing leading up to it and everything surrounding it. Yeah, it was frustrating. You know, you, you're in camp for all this time. You put in all the work, um, and you get almost there, and then something unfortunate happens, uh, and then it doesn't come through. Uh, and I was hoping that Gregory and I would just get rescheduled, but you know, I, I get it. You know, it, it's also he also trained very hard for the fight. And he's fighting in Brazil. I'm sure that's huge to him. You know, it'd be equivalent of me fighting in Hawaii. So I know that he didn't want to miss the opportunity. So I am glad they found him an, a, a replacement. Um, and I wasn't surprised that that they did. Uh, but once that, that was all said and done, you know, it was about getting myself a fight. Um, initially, I was kind of bummed that 
the fight was so far away. This was January when all of this went down. And then here I am in April, you know, so uh, I was bummed about that, but it is what it is. You know, this is the fight game. This is how it goes. Um, I can't dwell on it too long. I just have to get back to work. You have a lot of teammates fighting in Hawaii this weekend. Yeah. You're fighting in your new home in Las Vegas. Yeah. I mean, obviously you would love to fight in Hawaii, but is it kind of bittersweet you have a lot of teammates fighting in Hawaii this weekend? No, nah, not at all. I'm happy for them. Um, happy for, like, Kai Boy, who is getting to fight at home. You know, it's something um, I just did an interview with a news station back home with Rob DeMello, and he was asking me, you know, like, what would it mean to you to be able to fight back in Hawaii again? And I was like, man, it would mean everything. You know, when I first got into the UFC, uh, I was very, very optimistic about it. There was all these rumors swarming, and it, it went on for years. And I got to the point, like, ah, it ain't happening. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. <laughs> and, and then most recently when, um, you know, when Max uh, was getting together with the, the HTA, the, tor the tourism people, whatever, and then all of that came out, uh, and, and it was like, okay, like, let's not get our hopes up again, but uh, let's get our hopes up. <laughs> that was the final straw for me. Uh, UFC Hawaii is not going to happen in my lifetime. In my career, I should say. In my lifetime, maybe. In my UFC career, highly doubt it. Speaking of Max Mana, Hawaiians are known for their fucking chins. Um, I mean, what is this guy made of? Like, he's, he's absorbed the most amount of damage in the, in the UFC or significant strikes, but he's never been dropped. Like, yep. what's that guy made out of? I don't know, man. I Whatever he's secret juice or whatever, I need some. <laughs> but, no, he, Max, I mean, just another stellar performance from him. You know, like, that's, it's funny because I felt like even though the odds were in Max's favor, I felt like a lot of the people I spoke to thought Arnold Allen was going to win. And I just was like, how like I don't see it like don't get me wrong like I'm not trying to slight Arnold Allen like Arn and in fact I think Arnold Allen's stock went up from that fight in my opinion um and but in that fight I, I could be biased but I had it 4-1 and Arnold only winning that last round but that's when he really fucking impressed me is that last round like he like his corner talk like him just being like hey yeah what did they say World War Three or something I was like, damn, I, I was looking down. And then when they said it, I was like, wait, who said that? <laughs> and they were talking to Arnold, you know, and I was like, oh, this guy is game. And then it's like, okay, it's easy to say that, you know, the cameras are on you. My man came out swinging, swinging. I was like, okay, he means it. I was like, bro, Max, you put on a master class performance. Please do not get caught. Because, hey, Arnold Allen can crack. Max can take a shot, but Arnold Allen can crack. So it's like flip of a coin, you know, what, what what's going to happen. Um, but, yeah, I think Arnold's stock went up, and obviously Max is Max, so. What was the biggest thing you took away from your uh, from the Drake's Duplessis fight? Like, what was the biggest lesson? What did you learn from that fight? I actually learned a lot from that fight. Um, it's very – that fight was very frustrating for me after because when I watch it back, um, the way I felt, uh, and then especially in that first round – I completely dominated him. Like there was, he did all his like things that he does, and I shut it all down. The striking, he tried to wrestle. I I, I dominated him there on the ground. We went on the ground. I dominated him there, um, and I remember just like going to to the bench in the in, in after that round and being like, I got this guy. And maybe that was my downfall. Maybe somewhere me saying that to myself let my guard down slightly, you know. And, and again, not taking nothing away from Drakus, he. It was a fight, and he did exactly what he needed to do. He came out strong in the second, um, opened up a cut above my eye, which messed with my vision, and then ended up hitting me with a knee, which broke my nose, and that just shot my tank. Like, I could not breathe worth a shit. Um, but again, I'm not making any excuses. He, That's a fight, and that's what a fighter does, and he did that. So that night, he was a better man, but I really did learn that, like, okay, like, I really got to be... I always tell myself, Ray always tells me, sharp and smart, bell to bell, but I really, you know, I, I really got to stay on it. Had, had I just fought him the rest of the fight the way I did in that first round, he doesn't even touch me, you know? Um, so, yeah, it, it was a great learning experience for myself. From the outside perspective, it's kind of weird because usually you're the one with the gas tank. You're the one that always comes up, uh, up late, and he's the one that kind of 
gases, but it was kind of, it was completely switched. Yeah. The, the weird thing is that dude looks like he's gassing, but whatever it is, I don't know if he's just become accustomed to it, but he, he'll step on it. Um, and it, it sucked for me because Eric and Red are calling for things and like, okay, we got like more forward pressure or this and that. And like, I'm really trying, but I'm like, dude, now that like my breathing is so affected from the blood and all of that, the not being able to breathe through my nose and just constantly breathing out of my mouth, like not, and you know, and that's not really how I breathe in, in training and, and in anything. Um, so that really messed me up. Awesome. And then finally, just so one of your thoughts on um, Israel Asanya beating Alex Pereira. What, what, what are your thoughts on that fight? Oh man, what a fight! Like, uh, so in the in the well, or the not the third fight in the first fight, <laughs> in their third meeting. But in the first fight, you know, I was really uh, rooting for Izzy. You know, I I wanted I was rooting for him, um, and I was happy for Pereira when he did win. But then after that fight, I'm like, okay. He's beat him three times. No matter what Izzy does, like, Izzy's winning the whole fight, like, dominating the fight. Like, I think he could have pulled guard and still won that fight, you know, in that last round. But no matter what, this dude just finds a way to beat him. And uh, Chris Curtis said it best. He's like, oh, is he, it's like his boogeyman, you know, and, and it really is. Uh, and so I was like, in this fourth fight, I was like, man, I, I'm rooting for Izzy, but I really, I just think Pereira got his number. And then right before the finish, it looked like that's the way it was going to go. Started hitting him, caught him with that knee, started unloading on him, kind of like how he did in the first one. And fucking Izzy just uncorks a bomb of a right hand. And, man, that was, that was an, for a fan, that was an exciting fight. If you were the matchmaker right now, who would you give Iz Izzy next? Obviously, you would give yourself, but like, <laughs> um, but I mean, the the division's kind of in a weird spot, right? Like Robert Whitaker's on, uh, you know, is the best guy in the division, but he but he's lost twice, right? So like, who, who would you give Izzy next? Yeah, it's kind of like the same situation with Volk and Max, right? Like, Max is that guy, but he's come up short all those times. So it's like, do we keep making the same fight? Are they secretly hoping Yair beats him so that now they can make? another title fight, which Max and Yuri already fought. So, but, um, I, I don't know. I, I think, uh, yeah, it's, that is hard because yeah, you would think like Whitaker is the guy that deserves it, but I guess from a business company standpoint, you know, you want to make a fresh fight. Um, and that's a fight that we've seen a few times and, you know, Rob's just not been able to do it. Um, but I think he deserves it. So, I mean, if I'm the matchmaker and the, and the company man, maybe we look for fresh fresh meat. I know Izzy's kind of calling for Drakus, so maybe make that fight happen. Um, but yeah, I think rightfully, I think Rob deserves it. Uh, you know what I'll do? I'll fucking let Sean fight him, <laughs> just because I want to hear that press conference. I want to hear it. They need to do like a whole build up, like how they did Aldo and Connor, man, like that would sell tickets. And then obviously Hamzat's coming up to the division, um, looking for him versus, versus Paulo Costa is probably in the works. What do you think of Hamzat coming up to, to middleweight, right? Um, he, he was so dominant at welterweight. He's had a couple fights at middleweight, but like, do you think the weights, you know, it, it's going to be like a fair, fair advantage w w with everyone? I, I think so. Like, if you see um, Kamzad, he's actually a big dude. Like, he, he's got some height on him. And if he was just to prepare for 85, I'm sure the size size would be there. Um, and I, he's had a few fights at 85 and done excellent as well. So I don't think him at 85 is, is a big deal. But uh, as far as him, like, leapfrogging everybody, you know, to get a title shot, nah. Like, you know, let him, let him fight some of the, the top guys, at least in the top 10, 15, um, and, and let him build himself that way. And then he gets through those guys the way he's been getting through guys at 170, then sure, he, 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 he deserves it, you know. Um, he's got the name and the, and the hype behind him, so why not? Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Just one for me. Knowing your fight style, you're always a guy that if you're able to, you're going to bring the fight to your opponent. You mentioned Arnold Allen. They, the corner told him, go World War III. What is it that Eric and those cats tell you when they need you to really bring it? What gets you going? I mean, do they, do they play off the, the Hawaiian heritage? What do they get, do? To, what do they say to you that, that you know that you need to turn it on last-ditch effort? You know what? Like, uh, luckily, 
for me, like I'm easily motivated in that way. You know, I'm not the type of guy that is going to sit down. Like if I lost rounds one and two, like you see guys kind of look defeated, almost like how uh, Leon Edwards in that first fight with, uh, or no, sorry, the second fight with Usman um, when he won. Uh, how he kind of looked like he was on his chair and his uh, his corner could tell. His corner could tell, like, you know, he's a bit mentally defeated and they fucking had to spark his ass up to, to get out there and finish that fight and, and go after it. And look at how well that worked out for him, you know. So luckily for me, I feel like I'm not one of those guys, like, if I'm getting my ass beat one and two, I know in, in, my, in my head and in my heart, I need to go out there and do something spectacular. So it ain't going to take a whole lot from Ray and Eric to, you know, they're not going to have to push really hard to get that out of me. That being said, like you mentioned what happened for Leon and what worked for him, and everybody mentioned, like you said, that the fifth round looked best for Arnold. Do you, do most fighters, or maybe just yourself, when you watch these fighters, whether they be younger or newer to the game, and you see these, you know, showing these big moments of heart and effort, do you as a veteran fighter still get inspiration from some of these and see oh, other cats to, to want to push forward yourself? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Just because somebody is newer... Um, doesn't mean that inspiration is a perfect word for that. You know, you cannot be inspired by them and what they bring in their heart. Like, I love seeing that, you know, like, I, I love seeing that. I think that's one of the, the greatest things, attributes a fighter can have is heart, you know, because that's something that you either have it or you don't. You cannot really train that. You can work really hard, but if your heart is not there at the end of the day, your heart is not there. You know, that's just not instilled in you. Um, and Arnold Allen came out and showed that and that like even though I'm rooting for Max that that got me fired up I'm like yeah let's go you know like like it got me hype um just what his corner had to say and his reaction to it and then seeing him come out um and and do exactly what they asked him to do you know so he 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 did what he needed to do and obviously he came up short but he still like he made a fan out of me thanks man best of luck on Saturday Thank you, guys.